This was just begging to be pwned. Our museum begins in a padded cell. Here- Okay, these people think one flew over the cuckoo's nest is still accurate. Without realizing that one flew over the cuckoo's nest itself caused the reform of modern psych wards. An introductory documentary prepares visitors for what they are about to see. The truth behind the psychiatric system and its pervasive influence on society. Uh, I see. Basically it's the Scientology equivalent of Helm House. The visitor then enters the origins of psychiatry exhibit. What? Hypnosis? Freud just talking to people? In fact, I believe the term the talking cure was actually coined by one of Freud's patients. At this point, I will just admit that I am not a psychiatry student, so forgive me, if I make any historic or scientific errors. From the infamous Bedlam Hospital where patients were chained like animals, to the water tortures of the 19th century, to the surgical procedures of the early 20th century. That's called science. Science develops and improves over time. Judging modern science by stuff that happened decades or centuries ago is a bit like judging modern flight by old reels of an umbrella-like flying machine bouncing up and down. The next exhibit explores the origins of behavior therapy. Here the visitor learns how psychiatry laid the groundwork for the abuses we see today. Eugenics? What has the mind got to do with eugenics? Next, we trace the psychiatric ideology eugenics, or racial betterment. Oh come on. Psychiatry has absolutely nothing to do with genetics or races. Psychiatry is the study of the mind, not the body. At least neurology is the study of the brain, so neurology is at least slightly closer to having anything whatsoever to do with biology. And neurology still has nothing to do with eugenics and illustrate how propaganda was used to convince whole populations that so-called inferior people should be segregated, sterilized, and even killed. Which has nothing to do with psychology. Visitors then learn how the same science of eugenics... I like how they put that sarcastic inflection on science, as if you have to imply that eugenics isn't really a science in order to demonize eugenics. Responsible for the Nazi Holocaust, influenced the KKK. Whoa. Wait, what? Freud lived from 1856 to 1939. The Ku Klux Klan was founded in 1866 by Civil War Confederate veterans. So, are they saying that Freud had fully developed theories that spread all the way from Austria to America and influenced an entire cult by the time he was 10? Apartheid and psychiatric research in the US. That picture of the black person with the damaged back. I've seen that picture before. That had absolutely nothing to do with psychology, that was a slave who'd been whipped too hard. And slavery was already illegal in America by the time Freud was nine. So, if Freud had so much influence at such a young age, then that makes Freud truly impressive. The targeted African American and Hispanic children for abusive psychiatric treatment. Next, visitors learn how psychiatric treatment was repackaged and used to falsely label political dissidents in Russia as mentally ill and to incarcerate them without trial on the Soviet gulag system. In the mid-1930s, psychiatrists began using electroshock and psychosurgery. Most visitors touring the museum are unaware that these brain-damaging techniques are still used today. That's because they are not. Even on children. Visitors can dial their age to see how long they would be electroshocked if they were to receive this treatment today. Moving into the modern realm of psychiatry, visitors learn the true source of our drug culture, the advertising that feeds it, and the violence that results. You know, personally, I've never once been prescribed medicine by a psychiatrist. I have, however, been prescribed medication by doctors. And they work. My throat feels fine. The next exhibit suggests a present-day asylum. Here, the visitors shown psychiatry evading the law by incarcerating people in institutions against their will. Okay, look, I know for a fact that modern mental wards are nothing like that. Frankly, in my experience, the security at modern mental wards sucks actually. They leave the doors open and kind of ask people not to leave. Thousands have been subjected to this abusive practice which includes forced drugging and violent restraint. Again, I wish. 
I know someone who doesn't take his medicine and keeps getting himself into a worse shit, but the less said the better. With traumatic results, including death.